Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for this technology preview and introduction. As you may have noticed the title of this talk changed in the last week actually because we didn't want to give too much away about what I was going to be talking about in advance. So thanks for bearing with me and coming along. Uh, if you were expecting a talk about market segments, I'd be happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one after that. But right now, I'm going to talk about a new product that we've been working on at Calabra for quite some time, which is Calabra Cloud Suite. So, in many ways, what we do here, what we have been doing, what defines us as a community is really quite old. Of course we're excited by the new developments and the tweaks and all those great benefits that engineers have been talking about in this and other rooms over the last few days. But fundamentally the code base which LibreOffice shares is now 30 years old and even when Star Division in Germany had an idea to create a new office suite all those decades ago, they were already entering a crowded market of office suites. It wasn't even a brand new idea, really, at that time. So, we... <laughs> we're brought together by the belief that we can do better. Rather than taking the easy route of extending software giants that are already in our field, we believe we can do something differently and we can improve the user experience. Despite our best efforts over all that time and all that history, for most people, digital documents remain fundamentally inconvenient, I'm sorry to say. I, uh, I overheard one prominent Italian TDF board member yesterday saying that his wife still viewed the interface of LibreOffice like a telephone switchboard. That's, that's something we want to work on, right? Creating digital documents is a shared experience of modern living. It's something I'm actually surprised that stand-up comedians haven't capitalized on yet as one of those frustration points like going through airport security or taking a driving test. One of those things that we all go through and all suffer with at least a little bit. It's still a sticking point for most people. Despite that, it's pivotal to all sorts of life events that we go through, whether it be applying for a job, formatting a CV, applying with a cover letter, whether it be working through our financials and spreadsheets, figuring out if we could buy something, whether it be signing important contracts that can change the course of our lives, digital documents remain an absolutely pivotal part of turning points in, in modern lives. But they're still really inconvenient for most people. We have hundreds of formats which, though they may be designed to provide choice and flexibility, more often confuse users and business users and cause inefficiencies. We have problems sharing between files despite our best efforts in the open source community to make this stuff work. The average user experience is still one where sharing documents between applications is a really un unknown territory. We, we don't know what's going to happen exactly so often when we attempt to do these things. And as advertising for the latest other big brand office suites continues to promise yet more convenience, yet more features, yet more flexibility. So often what that really means is a very, very narrow scope, a very narrow definition of the circumstances in which those benefits will really be apparent. And for most use cases, those new technologies introduce new incompatibilities and new problems for the people who are using them in the, in the most common ways. So, we need our digital documents to be different. We need them to be accessible. And I mean accessible in terms of being there when we need them, being in the right place. 
being reliably there, not disappearing, looking right, wherever we want to view them, looking right to the people that we share them with, and being available to the people that we share them with, regardless of what device they're using, where they are, how up-to-date their application is. My sister works in human resources for a hospice in uh, the east of England. She manages 163 staff contracts. Uh, they have five job vacancies open at any one time. That means she's receiving documents every week from hopeful people trying to become nurses, doctors, care staff, accountants in her organization. I phoned her last night to get these numbers and to check out how she was doing so well. And uh, she said just last week she received three CVs which all came through blank in a format that was actually created by document suite. She was reading them in just because the people that had applied for these jobs were using a newer version than she was. I asked her, do you email these people? Do you say, hey, I can't read your documents? She said, no, of course, I don't have time to do that. I receive CVs every week. So these people who are potentially perfect candidates just don't get into the job. They don't have a chance because of the kind of incompatibilities that I'm describing here. We want to introduce a new level of flexibility and accessibility into this market. And that's because content creation remains key to business, key to enterprise. Digital documents remain key. They remain key to us personally and professionally. And convenience remains key when we're dealing with these things. So, my clip works. There we go. That's why I am here to introduce to you a new convenient way to access digital documents. Collabra has been working on various technologies which you're already aware of, mobile and um, server-based tech, that we are now bringing together into a product which I'm today announcing and before too long we hope to be launching. Collabra Cloud Suite is open source, it works across devices, across platforms. Any device with a modern web browser can access the documents which you've created on the desktop on other clients. It's built by Collabra for Enterprise, literally built for Enterprise. These are the guys who've asked us in the first place to make this tech happen for them. We're very proud to be making it happen. Built on the open source foundation of LibreOffice, we're introducing a new level of flexibility into these kinds of products that allow us to offer private, hybrid, and hosted clouds. On-premise, with the client on one server and the documents on the other, or hosted entirely by a third-party solution, there are all sorts of configurations where this technology will work. We maintain advanced document features across the clients. That means that if you've got change tracking built into your documents, a critical feature for many organizations, those changes will be visible regardless of where you view the document. They won't disappear along with the more sophisticated toolbar when you move away from the desktop. Things like notes, things like formulas, these things will persist across the devices that you're using these documents on. And I have a video to give you an idea of how that looks in just a few minutes. Perhaps most importantly, Collabra Cloud Suite supports the same formats, over 100 of them, and up to 186 if you count every filter, that LibreOffice on the desktop supports. That means any file format which you can view on the desktop, you will be able to view also on the web client and in the mobile. That's thanks to the hard work of over a thousand contributors over the years, all these third party libraries, all this wonderful open source goodness that's gone in to our product that allows us to have this kind of amazing view of the format field. And because of how our rendering system takes place 
on a server rather than on the client, those documents should look exactly the same across those clients. So not just supporting those formats, but actually rendering them in the same way using the same engine in the back end. That's not something that any existing Office Suite can offer on web. 100% of our work on Cloud Suite is being contributed to the LibreOffice Online project. We're doing this open first, as everything that Collabora does. We hope to build a community of contributors around the new components that we're building so that we can work together to make this as good as it can possibly be. As I mentioned, the three clients that we're offering have a common code base. Fixes to rendering in one therefore apply to both of the others, so we're moving forward together. And I'd like to point out that a really important part of this work was commissioned originally by TDF, the Document Foundation, to invest in our tiled viewing technology, which in turn built upon work that we'd done in the Android viewer um, for tablet computers. And there are independent viewers using this technology already in development. And there were actually also some talks about that earlier in the conference. So um, this is a little demo video that I put together for you before you go to sleep. Here is a temporary web interface that we put together as a technology preview. That's what this talk is, a technology preview. So many of the things that you're seeing here will change, but I think enough of them are there to demonstrate the kind of experience that we can currently offer. Here we have a temporary file list. These are documents that we're using, some of which have been supplied. Um, in the tab at the top here, we'll see our first document. Now this is actually a presentation. Uh, this is an earlier version of this presentation, and we're viewing this in Chrome Web Browser. We have all the slides listed on the right-hand side, and as you can see, I'm just clicking through them. I'm going to go through a variety of different kinds of documents here. Uh, the first, here we are. Yeah. I'm going to do a little editing now. They click here in the middle. As you can see, the image has been selected. We can click and drag, we can resize. This is all in the browser. Other elements will move around as we move other elements, just as you'd expect in LibreOffice and the desktop. <coughs> this user interface is built originally on the Android interface that you may have already tried. The handles and the selection work in a similar way, so they'll be familiar if you've used our Android editor. Here we have a bit more complex layout document. I'm going to be zooming in and out there. The content here again is editable. It's also saveable, as we'll see in just a moment. Now, as I've said, what we're expecting and hoping for here is full fidelity across clients. So however this document looks, however it's edited here, however it's edited on Android, those changes should look exactly the same when the document is saved and switched between clients. For now, we've only built in a few basic editing options at the top here to illustrate what's possible. I've just selected some text by double-clicking on it. Those handles are draggable, just like in Android. Didn't want to break the layout of this pretty document too much, so uh, yeah. <laughs> this is also based on a template that's available on the Document Foundation website, by the way. So, templating system working well. Here we see the Save and Save As buttons. Save As allows you to download this document to save it locally onto your computer. So you can have gone onto the Cloud Suite server website, viewed a document, clicked Save As, download it locally, take it offline. You can do that also on Android, take it on mobile, you're going on a train, you lose an internet connection, continue editing, 
winning it back online, upload it back to Cloud Suite online, and then edit again in the browser. Here we see some other features demonstrated. We have change tracking illustrated. If you're using change tracking, you'll recognize the color scheme here. This remains editable, both in the browser and if saved on the desktop. Search functionality, as you'll see, already working. Next up, we actually have a, a docx file. This is a template that's borrowed from the Office 365 official template archives. Just to demonstrate how formatting and images transfer across. Done no editing to this document, just loaded it straight to Cloud Suite. Here it is, ready for viewing or editing, saving offline, just as you need. Next up, we have an XLSX document. So here we have OXML in action. This is actually a spreadsheet that includes formulas, which are producing the numbers that we see here. As I click through the cells, you'll see the formulas which are actually producing those numbers on the right. This is quite heavily formatted. As you can see, it looks more like a document, but these are actually just cells in the background with custom images and so on, all of which has been set in Excel and now loaded here in Cloud Suite. As you can see as I click through the numbers on the top right, the, the number formatting was being applied to the, the dollar and the decimal, it's all being applied, and here we can see the sum which is actually producing the total in those fields with the total ticket sales. So as we can see, after this document was loaded, these totals were actually calculated in the first render. It's pretty seamless. Looks like an image. It's actually being calculated in the background. These values can be changed. They'll affect the total just as you'd expect on the desktop. I'm just going through some editing in the cell here to prove it can be done. Lastly, I wanted to demonstrate a diagram. In fact, this is a Visio diagram here. This has been loaded, uh, yeah, just produced by Microsoft Video as a, as a flowchart, uh, saved in uh, VSD format, as you can see in the title bar there, it's the file name, and loaded here for editing, again, as you would expect, on the desktop, and um, yeah. <coughs> This can also be embedded in other documents, of course. We can include this in a, uh, either docx file or um, in an ODT. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with the lighting there. What's that? Mine? Well, if everyone can still see, that's good. Um, the text here is editable inside the diagram. The diagram itself can be shrunk, can be moved around. The same kind of editing facilities, again, that you'd expect. So, that concludes my little video demo. Next up I want to say some of the things that we aren't currently doing. I mentioned earlier the, uh, the switchboard comment that I overheard yesterday. Well, as beautiful and wonderful and um, uh, in my personal uh, experience tremendously usable the desktop user interface is that it's becoming, we don't want the kitchen sink on all the other clients too. 
people have different expectations on different platforms and different form factors. We are aiming for the right features on the right context. That means while it might be nice to have 200 buttons on the web UI, that's not what we're aiming for. That doesn't mean that we're missing out document features. That doesn't mean things will look wrong because you can't edit in a particular way on Android or on web. But it does mean that the user interface should reflect the screen size that you're using and should reflect your expectations of web user interfaces in general. As you've seen at the moment, we have quite a minimalistic UI on web. We are continuing to work on user experience polishing at this point. What I've shown you is a technology preview, and we're making that as smooth as we possibly can before we launch. I think it's important that we point out that we work on documents. We're not trying to fill in a whole new web stack here. So document viewing and editing is the core of what we're doing with Collaborate Cloud Suite. And that means we don't want to write a new group where server or a new file server in the background or a new operating system for that matter to provide infrastructure around this. We're, solid, we're, we're squarely focused on delivering a document experience which is flexible and works with other technology. To that end, we've been working with a company called IceWalk who do provide group web <coughs> services. We're integrating into their comprehensive product to make an off-the-shelf off system which includes the document viewing and editing which I've just been demonstrating to you. Now we have a flexible and powerful API which iSwap are using to put their own interface on top of the technology that we've built in Collabora Cloud Suite. And going forward we want Cloud Suite to provide this kind of seamless integrated experience so that the technology that you expect, the integration that you expect, works out of the box from whatever provider you're using. And frontiers that we're now facing are, for one thing, collaborative editing. This is something that we know is very important. We have some great guys working on it. And at some point, we hope to be able to introduce that to you too. As I've said, we're working with integration with third-party systems. We want Cloud Suite to offer this experience in as many places as possible, for enterprise customers and obviously end users too. We're growing an ecosystem around this product, make sure it can live up to its potential. And we're streamlining client communication between those clients that we've built. That's something that's only going to get better in terms of what you can access from one client to the next. We believe what we've built already has features on a par with popular products like Google Docs. We're also already more flexible than Office 365. Better than Google, more flexible than Microsoft is a mantra that I'm personally following. And thanks to the common code base that we have, we've managed to deliver an extraordinary experience in this technology preview quite early on. We couldn't have done it without the incredible work of the LibreOffice community that's gone into our shared 8 million lines of code. Thank you for everybody here who's participated in that, who makes the community great, allows us to stand on the shoulder of giants and make an innovative new product like Cloud Suite. We have a new website this week. Please visit collaborateoffice.com. The details are also in your welcome pack. You can sign up for newsletter announcements. I'd love to inform you about when we have a product that is ready for launch. You can already inquire about demos on the website. Look forward to receiving your details. And that's it for me. I'd love to hear your questions.